Jai Hind everyone. Today I am going to start uh, another unit of the control system which is uh, related to stability analysis. So stability analysis basically stability analysis. So you see stability analysis of the closed loop control system can be determined, can be obtained in S plane by determining the roots of the characteristic equation. Right. So accordingly, if the roots lies on the left hand side of the system, the system is said to be stable, otherwise unstable. Right. So the stability can be accessed. It is not always necessary to determine the roots through the uh, by finding the uh, roots of the characteristic equation. Right. To find uh, to determine the stability by finding out the characteristic equation roots. Right. So we can also access the basically you know that the stability basically is of two types relative stability and the absolute stability right so the absolute stability can be uh, determined by using the routh hurwitz criteria and in this lecture i will talk about this criteria right and the uh, relative uh, stability can be accessed by using the frequency domain methods, which basically include your uh, Bode plot or uh, Nyquist, Bode plot or Nyquist plot, right? Other plots as well, right? So, if we talk about the bounded input, right? We, uh, in the previous lecture, I have talked about the time response uh, of the control system. Right there, we are getting uh, there we are getting the time solution of the output, right? Uh, with respect to uh, time, where time is an independent variable. So we can see here, you can see here that the response of the system is basically divided into the two parts. It is a summation of two parts. That is the force response as well as the natural response. So depending upon this natural response. If we talk about the bounded input, right? So the system can be stable or system can be unstable or it can be a marginally stable system. So let me uh, clear you this, clear this thing with example. See, I have applying the two inputs. These inputs are, let's say, bounded input, right? And if I take uh, their, let's say, block diagram. Let uh, G1 uh, will be 1 upon G1 H1, and for this system, I will take another uh, block G2 H2. Right here, this is the CS output, and this is the uh, sorry RS. The bounded input is applied here. This is a RT with respect to time. This is R again RT with respect to time. These are the bounded input. Right, and for this system, this is RS. For this system also, this is RS and CS. Right, so this is the I have made here the op, uh, the block diagram of the closed loop control system. Right, so what is the output for this? What will be the output for this system? See, when the output is approaching towards the zero, right or when the output is infinite, sorry, finite, when the output is reaching to some finite value with the as advancement of time, then it is called as the stable system, right. And for this system, if output is, if output is reaching an infinite value with the advancement of time, see here, this type of system is called as unstable system, right? See, for the net, that is, it either it becomes zero or it will become infinity with respect to uh, it. It will become zero or it will become finite with the, when the time becomes infinite, right? That type of system is called as stable system. And when the system, uh, then the natural response of the system is growing with respect to time, right? without any bond bound then this type of system is called as unstable system right and when there are no decays in or no growth in the output of the system that means it remains constant with the respect to time then that type of system is called as the marginally stable system 
marginally stable system will be the output will be like this for the marginally stable system okay so a system is stable if every input results in the bounded output and the system is said to be unstable if any out bounded input will result in any unbounded output right so now let me uh, clear it um, more i'll make with respect to s domain now i am drawing uh, the roots of the characteristic equation with respect in s plane right along with the graphs so we know that the system is said to be stable when the roots lies in the left hand side of this s plane right this will be the imaginary part on let's say and this will be the real part okay so this system here you can see the poles are lying in the left hand side right so this type of system is said to be stable and will get the output like this uh, let's say it is it is okay and when the roots are lying on the right hand side of the system then system is said to be unstable sorry okay this is you can see here these are decreasing and here these are increasing the oscillations in the system right so we can say and for the uh, when the roots are lying on the imaginary axis of the s plane the system is said to be marginally stable this is a stable system this is unstable system and this will be the marginally stable system that means in that case the we have no oscillations in the system we can make it a straight line here i can uh, let me clear this okay so you can see here that the oscillations are decreasing in nature with respect to time so these are basically stable and unstable and marginally system right so we can say that with the if any oscillations are setting up in the system right with the passage of time right and are uh, damping out with respect to with the advancement of time then the system is stable and conversely if oscillations Uh, are increasing with the advancement of time the system is said to be unstable and if there the oscillations are damped out in the system then the system is said to be marginally stable so i have taken one example here will uh, find out the roots of this example right uh, to determine whether the system is stable or unstable or marginally stable right so you can see here from this system the way this will be uh, rs is in uh, input applied to the system you can say that this is the gs right so roots of the characteristic equation here we can say the cs upon rs will be equal to this will be the transfer function and here gs upon 1 plus gs hs right and the value of hs here is 1 and we can write gs will be equals to 1000 upon s plus 2 S plus three, S plus five into one. Here one plus. Okay, so this will be the well. Sorry, this is the G S upon this upon one plus G S H S. Or you can write here directly one plus G S H S is equals to zero. Will be the 
characteristic equation for this system. We can correct it, we can write it 0, then this will be called as the characteristic equation to find out the roots of the system. Okay, so this is the characteristic equation. If I am uh, writing it like this, I am directly doing it uh, in this way. Okay, so this will be s plus 2, s plus 3, and s plus 5 will be equals to sorry, plus 1000 will be equals to 0. So, this equation after solving, we will get s cube plus 10 s square plus 31 s plus 1030. While solving this, we will get this. Now, you can uh, when we uh, will find out the roots, there will be three roots for this system, right? One root will be minus 13.41, right? And s2 and s3 will be equal to minus 1.70 plus minus 8.59 okay so now this can be plotted easily in an s plane here the value is minus 13.41 this is one of the root right and another is minus 1.70 let's say here and it is 8.59 i and this is minus 8.59 i so, this will be the another root. So, you can see all the three roots are lying in the left half of S plane. So, this system is called as the stable system. So, this system will be called as the stable system. Now, if the number of roots are more, like uh, in the previous example, I have solved for three uh, third order equation, right? If we have a uh, sixth order equation or seventh order equation and we have to determine this absolute stability of any system, then we can use the routh Hurwitz method, right? We can use this routh Hurwitz stability criteria method. So, what is this routh Hurwitz criteria? This routh Hurwitz criteria is introduced as, as a very useful tool for determining the stability of the system, right? It is basically used for determining the continuous system stability, right? So, the in routh Hurwitz criteria, it, it states that the number of roots of the characteristic equation with positive real part will be equal to the number of sign changes in the first column of the routh array. So, by using this method, we can easily uh, tell how many poles are lying in the right hand side and how many poles or zeros are li lying in the uh, sorry poles are lying in the left hand side of the uh, plane right or any on the j omega axis. So, there are basically two necessary conditions for the routh Hurwitz criteria. The first one is that all the coefficients of the all the coefficients of the characteristic equation must have same sign right they, uh, they, they that means they all must be positive in nature and there must be no term missing in between from the highest degree to lowest degree. For example, I am talking, I am starting with the s raised to the power 4. That means the no term missing means it must be continuing it started from uh, like it is starting from s raised to the power 4 and it must be continuing till s raised to the power 0. Right, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 there is no term missing in between from highest degree to lowest degree. So, and all the coefficient must have the same sign. That means you can see here all the coefficients are having uh, are positive in nature, right? So, if these two conditions are not satisfied, we can directly write that the system is unstable. But if these two conditions are satisfied, then we have to go uh, another, we have to do some another steps, basically two steps to determine the stability of the system. By uh, if these, um, by these two terms, uh, these two uh, conditions, we can only determine whether the system is stable or unstable. But if system is stable, then we have to determine uh, by uh, doing these two steps, we can confirm the stability of the system, whether it is marginally stable, whether it is stable or it is unstable. So, the uh, two step include, first we have to develop a data table by which is called as the route table, right? And another, we have to interpret the that uh, route table by uh, telling how many closed loops are lying in the left hand side 
and how many uh, closed loop uh, poles are lying in the ravitain site or on the g omega axis. So, here also I have taken one example. Uh, it is not actually example, it is uh, the equation that I have taken to generate the Routh Hurwitz uh, Routh table actually. So, this equation uh, is a raised a4 s raised to the power 4 plus a cube a3 s cube plus a2 s square plus a1 s0 plus a0 is equals to 0. So, from any characteristic equation, from any characteristic equation, we can determine the first two rows. Right. We have to first of all for determining uh, writing the table, we have to write the power of s in the column, right, without missing any power s raised to since it is a starting from the s raised to the power 4. So, I will write here s raised to the power 4, 3, then 2, 1, and I will continue till s raised to the power 0, right. And in the first row, I will write the alternate. Uh, coefficients, right. For s raised to the power 4, it is a4, then another is for s raised to the power 2, that is a2, and then another is a0, right. For s raised to the power, uh, sorry, this is a constant, okay. This will be s raised to the power 1, and this will be a constant, that is s raised to the power 0, okay. There is a mistake here. And for s raised to the power 3, another left out coefficients will be writing uh, will be uh, should be writing in the second row that is a3 and a1 this is a1 and this is a3 okay now i have these two rows are always generated from the given characteristic equation now we have to calculate another rows which are left out right so now s square can be determined from the formula C. Here we will use this method A3 into A2, right, minus A4 into A1 upon this first coefficient, first coefficient of the above row that is A3. Similarly, another element this uh, another element second element of this row will be let us say this will be equal to b1. Now, b2 can be calculated as I am writing here b2. Now, b2 will be calculated here as <coughs> again a3 into a0 minus a4 into 0. Okay, Since there is no element we will take it as 0. So, 0 into a4 will be 0 only upon again this first element of the just immediate uh, above row, right, that is a3. So, this will be the value of b2, right, and we cannot write b3 here because there is no element left to calculate, right. Now, s1 will be b1 into, let me write it out the value of b1 here so that I can clear it a1 upon this is a3. Now, I will rub it and I write it b1 here only to make it more clear. Okay. So, this will be b1 and this is v2, right. Now, s1 can be b1 into a1, right. Let me write value of c1 here. This will be c1 and this will be let us say d1. Now, c1 will be c1 will be equal to b1 into a1, right, minus b2 into a3 upon is se upar wala jo bhi is ke upar wali row ka coefficient first coefficient rahega, we will put the value of that. So, this will be b1, right. Yaha pe c2 ke liye kuch nahi rahega, there is nothing uh, for c2 because there is no element in the third column, right. So, if I multiply it b1 by 0 and a3 again by 0, then there will be 0. So, I left this column and value of c1 will be this, okay. Now, for again for d1, this will be c1 into b2 upon b1 minus 0 into 0 upon c1, right. Sorry, b1, 
right c1 so this will be c1 into b2 minus 0 upon c1 so in this way we can generate the route table now once we have generated the route table then we have to concentrate on the first column of the route table if the all the elements of the first column are positive then the system is said to be unstable let us say one of the element is negative of the first column, then system will be unstable and number of roots lying in the right hand side will depend upon the number of sign changes in the first column. For example, if B1 is negative here, then you can see, you can directly write the system is unstable. Now to calculate, there must be four roots for this system, right? So, C number of sign changes positive to positive there is no sign change now for positive to negative there is one sign change then from negative to positive again second sign change and positive to positive no sign change. So there are two roots that are lying on the right hand side of the S plane and because of that the system is unstable in nature. So, after generating the route table, we have to concentrate on the first column and this first column will decide whether the system is stable or unstable. Now, we have three different cases as well. Uh, to the, uh, uh, for example, um, there are two special cases. This is the general case and if there is a single element uh, which, is, which becomes 0 in the first column or the whole row becomes 0. So, these are the two special cases we will discuss in the next lecture and now uh, let us take this example to determine whether the system is stable or not. So, the characteristic equation is given to us and we can determine the route table here, generate the route table. This will be S4, S cube, S square, S ki power 1 and S square, uh, sorry S ki power 0. Now, the first row can be taken from here only. The first element is 1, another element will be 6 and last element will be 1, right. Now, second row also uh, will be taken from here only. This is first element is 2 and another element is 4. Now, S square can be, S square will be 2 into 6 minus 4 into 1 upon 2. So, 2 6 is 12 minus 4 upon 2, right. So, it becomes 8 by 2, uh, that means 4, right. And Second uh, element will be 2 into 1 minus 0, right? There is nothing. So, we will take it as 0. 2 into 1, that means 2 minus 0 upon again 2, it will become 1, right? Similarly, S raised to the power 1 be now calculated from the above 2 rows. Immediate above 2 rows will determine the this row. That means 4 into 4, 16 minus 2 into 1, 16 minus 2 upon 4. Similarly, 4 into 0 minus 2 into 0 and nothing. So, this will be blank, okay. We can left it blank and this will become 14 by 4. That means uh, 7 by 2. That means 3.5 it is coming out, right. And the now S power 0 will be 3.5 into 1 minus 4 into 0 upon 4, right, upon 3.5. So, this is 3.5 into 1 upon 3.5 this is the minus 0. So, it will become z 1. <coughs> now, concentrating on the first column. First column, this is 1, 2, 4, 3.5 and 1. This will be the first column of this table, right. We can see here that the all the elements of the first column are positive, right. So, this system is said to be stable. And before generating the route table, we have to first determine uh, the check the necessary condition. You can see here no term is missing s raised to power 4, 3, 2, 1 and all the coefficients are having same sign. Then we can start the gen uh, generating the route table, okay. So, this is the another example here again we have to determine the stability of the system by using the route Hurwitz criteria. So, first of all, we will check for the necessary condition. C s raised to the power 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. That means no term is missing and all the coefficients are having the same sign. Now, we can start the generating the table. So, this table will be s raised to the power 4, 3, 2, 1 and 0. Okay. Now, s raised to the power 4 will be coefficient and this row will be 2, 
वन एंड टू वन एंड टू राइट एंड कॉफिशियंट इन द सेकेंड रो विल बी टू एंड थ्री नाउ दिस कॉफिशियंट फॉर द एस स्क्वायर विल बी टू इंटू सॉरी टू इंटू वन माइनस टू इंटू वन इज टू माइनस थ्री टू जस्ट सिक्स बाई टू इट इज कमिंग आउट टू बी माइनस फोर बाई टू दैट मीन्स माइनस टू एंड दिस विल बी टू इंटू टू दैट इज फोर माइनस टू इंटू जीरो मीन जीरो अपॉन टू सो इट इज कमिंग आउट टू बी टू राइट नाउ कॉफिशियंट फॉर दिस एस वन विल बी माइनस टू इंटू थ्री दैट इज माइनस सिक्स प्लस सॉरी माइनस ऑफ टू इंटू टू दैट इज फोर अपॉन माइनस टू सो इट इज कमिंग आउट टू बी Uh, minus ten upon minus two is five, and this will become zero, uh, and nothing you can left it, okay? And this will be again five into two, that is ten minus zero upon five. It is coming out to be again two. So the first column is two, two minus two, five and two. This is the these are the elements of the first column. So you can see here from this first column, one of the element in the first column is negative. so you can write here that the system is unstable and how many roots are lying in the right hand side can be determined by the changes in the sign uh, of the first column that is positive to positive no sign change positive to negative there is one sign change negative to positive another sign change and positive to positive no sign change so out of four roots two roots are lying in the right hand side of an rhs plane of s plane so the system is unstable in nature so there are total four roots so two are lying in the right hand side and two are lying in the left hand side of s plane so this is it for today's lecture in the next lecture i will discuss the two special cases in which one of the row is uh, zero one of the row contains zero element or one single uh, uh, element of a row is zero thank you